Hi, I'm George Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland. We're at VMworld 2014. One of the big subjects at VMworld is storage. The show has really evolved from a show about virtualization to a show about storage to almost a show about flash storage. So the problem that we have, or I think a lot of IT managers face today, is what of these flash solutions should I get? Well, to help me with that conversation, I've asked Joel McKelvey from Pure Storage to join us. Joel, how are you doing? Good. Thanks for having me here. Not a problem. So, Joel, what do you do at Pure Storage? I run virtualization marketing for Pure. Okay, great. So, let's kind of, you, you got a great little diagram going here uh, to kind of help us categorize where these different solutions might fit. So, let's kind of talk about the, the four that we see in the market, right? One is hybrid. The other is caching or cache-based systems. Of course, the other one, you might know a little bit about this market, right? All flash. And then finally, the kind of emerging, if you will, hyper-converged hyper -converged, uh, market. So if it makes sense, let's kind of walk through each one of these and talk about the pros and cons and why we sort of wrote them in these different uh, areas of the board. Does that make sense? Sure, yeah, and let me start with this. Um, the, I mean, if the fundamental problem for virtualization is this slow sand problem, right, all these architectures work to accelerate that, right? Sure. And they're all using and leveraging Flash to get us to a better place. So that's, based on your statement earlier, that's why really Flash is the, the topic at VMware. Yeah, and I think part of the problem with, with Flash in general is it, it is it, even if it's implemented poorly, it still can make a difference, right? <laughs> Absolutely. I, I, I mean, I, you know, I always laugh when people say, oh, I got a laptop with Flash, and now my laptop's so much faster. Well, it's not so much that because the, the Flash was, your laptop was really needing that performance. It's just yeah. the nature of Flash. So let's talk first about caching. I think, you know, what I call this is, is sort of the, the surgical performance strike. You know, I envision a poor IT guy sitting in the corner somewhere, and the database guy, guy is screaming at him, and the quickest way to kind of quiet the guy down is just, Throw some uh, SSDs in the in the server and get on out of out of the business. What do you what do you think about caching? Well, I mean, and of course that works, right? When you put a cache in the host, it's going to make the host's ability to access storage faster, as long as you know you're hitting that cache regularity. Um, the challenge with caching include um, a couple of items. The first one is is that it's inconsistent, right? Um, the problem is consistent. Uh, the problem with caches, as soon as you go beyond the cache, right, you're going to slow down to the speed of disk. I liken this to hiking with my seven-year-old daughter. When the family goes hiking, we all hike at seven-year-old daughter speed. Right. And when you have disk and flash together in a system, you move at disk speed, right. not at flash speed. But, you know, you, the people who buy these cache systems are not being dumb, right. right? They're solving an immediate problem. They can do it very surgically, like you said. It does work. And you'll get, you know, 35, 40% performance enhancement from doing this until that time as you really overwrite that cache. So um, I also put it kind of low on the simplicity curve because you have to size the cache really well. It's physically attached to physical servers. So as a VMware admin, you have to make sure your VMs are on the cache system and you're doing all those things right. But it does work, right? And it gives you that benefit of flash in a cache space. And, and, and don't you also at some point run into uh, kind of a, a little bit of a management issue as well, right? Because now if I, if I let this continue, I might end up with a hundred different caches to manage. And, and then I so I have a, a, a human scaling issue as well, correct? And it works best if you're under, say, 10 nodes. Because you get beyond 10 nodes, you go and buy yourself a much more powerful storage system. Right. And you don't do this sort of surgical one or two host, six host, eight host type of a, a space. For okay. Cache. So, so I, in my opinion, kind of a close brethren to that is the, the hybrid system. Now, this is obviously a shared system that is leveraging some cache, and, but still using hard drives, right? Well, yeah. It's like, it's like caching with a high-speed drive on the same storage system, right? And again, these work. They will make your storage faster. There's no question about it. Compared to the old slow SAN, a hybrid SAN system is going to be much faster. Um, the challenge is, again, that it's inconsistent, right? Um, but also, um, that the ability to really deploy it is good, right? You're putting it into an existing SAN environment. It is, um, from a simplicity perspective, it's really easy to implement. You, kind of plug it in right next to your existing SAN system, turn it up, and it just works. The problem is, is it doesn't work every single time. Again, if your hits are off the cache, it slows to the speed of disk, and you kind of get, get that problem. But um, very price competitive. It helps you get some of that speed and still 
pay a very low price for what you're doing. Well, you know what? Uh, one of my complaints with it, and by the way, this is a bonus for our viewers because this wasn't planned, but one of my big complaints with it is it has to do with resiliency. I'm also kind of a data protection guy, and what I see these, the way I see these systems configured is they use very, very high capacity hard drives to drive down that overall price per gigabyte because they are putting flash in the system. Well, the problem with a very high capacity hard drive is A, you have a lot less hard drives, and then they take much longer to rebuild during a RAID rebuild type of thing. And we've seen these environments where we have a drive failure, we can, we, the customers experience weeks of rebuild time. Well, that's not a good situation to be that's in a rebuild mode week for weeks. Rebuild yeah, time. that's not good, right? It, yeah, so there was an announcement today, by the way, of one of the drive vendors announced an eight terabyte drive. Can you imagine? That's right? Yeah, let's not even go there. They're running at 35 100k right yeah. so incredibly slow exactly so <laughs> let's uh so let's move down here and i think hyperconverge is interesting because it's gotten a lot of attention lately uh there there's i think some pros and cons to it what's your thoughts on it well so my thought is in its baseline default configurations which is not terribly resilient right only two copies of data and in a small number of nodes it's actually really good Mm -hmm. Right. Um, it allows you to put the storage directly into the host, sort of the way the thing we abandoned 10 ish years ago when we started going to uh, uh, 15 years ago. Now I'm showing my age when we started going to really shared storage systems and SANS very heavily taking it, um, putting it back in the host. It reduces the latencies. Right. So it's nice, low latency. Mm -hmm. You get great storage uh, performance out of it, but it breaks operationally um, a couple of things. First of all, there's the host refresh cycle versus the storage refresh cycle, which now when you want more storage, you have to refresh your hosts, and it right. gets very complicated. But then also when you scale beyond six-ish nodes, it becomes a management nightmare. It's an N plus one problem right. that um, you just, the number of management consoles and the amount of interconnect becomes very, very challenging. Right. Um, and again, most hyperconverged situations today are putting a combination of flash and disk into that host. So you get some of the problems associated with hybrid, you just get them much closer and with a lower latency as you connect to it. Right. Well, I think the other challenge, is, and you kind of touched on this, is, is really the scale issue because as you start to bring these nodes up, the, you still have a network in here, right? There's still a network. And, and so if you have a network, and you start having you know, 20, 30 nodes that have to all intercommunicate to make sure, or make sure the right I.O. is going to the right place, this starts to get a little complex, right? Very so, quickly. So then let's, uh, let's move on to all flash. Let's talk a little bit about that. Uh, obviously, now we're talking about a shared environment with no hard disks. Uh, what's your take there? Well, so let's just talk about flash remote. All of these are using flash, right? right? And all of these systems are predicated. The, way, the reason you install all of these is because you're concerned that you can't buy all flash. Everyone who's built these architectures, installed these architectures, right. understands flash is going to make it fast. Right. But there's a concern about price. There's concern about reliability. There's concern about maturity of the devices that do that. If those things were not there, and we believe that there is no price concern, we believe that there's no reliability concern, and, and no maturity concerns with at least the pure systems, then all flash becomes the logical choice. Right. It's operationally very easy. You just plug it into your SAN, and it's going to work. And it gives you the performance that you need and it gives you the reliability that you need. So that is why not just Pure, but also our, our competitors and our imitators are going after all flash as that solution. And what I see in the marketplace is all of these have place, places today. But most of them are having places in an under six node, mm -hmm. smaller, less, more price concern type environment probably under 100 VM type environments, right. where then this starts becoming predominant in the market. Yeah, and I, I think the, the the other thing that always struck me and, and has stuck with me from, I was at your guys' Evolve conference last year, I know you're getting ready to do another one, but what struck me as I got to mingle with some of your users was performance was in there, but the, the, the surprise or shock, I think, or the, the satisfaction really came from how it just made life so much simpler, right? It just leveled every, all the other performance issues. Well, we, we love it when they say that, but I would say this about Flash. It gives you so much performance that it can hide a lot of other ills. Right. Um, what Pure is really focused on is taking that performance instead of just giving you a million billion IOPS, which you'll hear from other folks, is taking some of that performance and rolling it in to accelerating the simplicity part of it, in addition to accelerating sort of the performance side of it. So you can do things without management that you couldn't do before because you have more than enough 
performance, things like encrypting everything, things like deduping everything, things like compressing everything without taking a performance hit because you just simply have so much performance in the system. So Joel, thanks for joining us today. I think that really helps. I think it's a key takeaway here for our viewers is there's, there's a role for most flash solutions. What you got to do is kind of look at your environment and see where it makes the most sense. But as you scale, all flash begins to make more and more sense. So take a really good hard look at that. Thanks for joining us today. I'm George Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland.